ghosts until we moved into Willow Creek House. It was supposed to be our fresh start, a cozy retreat nestled in the woods. But from the moment we stepped foot inside, something felt off. The air was heavy, suffused with a chill that seemed to seep into my bones. My wife brushed it off as mere nerves from moving to a new place, but I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Our daughter, Lily, was the first to notice strange occurrences. She'd wake up in the middle of the night, insisting she heard whispers coming from the walls. At first, we chalked it up to her overactive imagination, but then things started to escalate. Objects would go missing, only to reappear in the most unlikely of places. Doors slammed shut on their own, and shadows danced in the corners of our vision. I tried to rationalize it all, blaming it on the old house settling or the wind rattling through the trees. But deep down, I knew there was something more sinister at play. One night, as I lay awake in bed, I heard footsteps echoing down the hallway. My heart pounded in my chest as I listened, paralyzed with fear. The footsteps drew closer and closer until they stopped right outside our bedroom door. I held my breath, waiting for whatever lurked on the other side to reveal itself. But nothing happened. The house fell silent once more, leaving me to wonder if I had imagined the whole thing. As days turned into weeks, the disturbances grew more frequent. Lily grew pale and withdrawn, plagued by nightmares that left her screaming in the dead of night. My wife and I tried everything to reassure her, but it was clear that whatever haunted Willow Creek House had sunk its claws into our family. Desperate for answers, I began scouring the internet for information about the house's history. What I uncovered chilled me to the core. It turned out that Willow Creek House had a dark past, one shrouded in tragedy and death. Decades ago, a family had lived there, only to meet a grisly end at the hands of a vengeful spirit. Their bodies were never found, their souls condemned to wander the halls for all eternity. I knew then that we had to leave, that no amount of sage or prayers could cleanse the evil that lurked within those walls. But the spirit had other plans. That night, as we packed our bags and prepared to flee, the temperature in the house plummeted. I could see my breath hanging in the air as a sense of dread washed over me. And then, from the darkness, it emerged. A figure, tall and ethereal, drifted towards us with an otherworldly grace. Its eyes burned with an unholy light as it reached out with spectral hands, grasping for our souls. I screamed, grabbing my family and running for the door. But no matter how fast we ran, the spirit was always one step ahead, herding us back into the heart of the house. In a last-ditch effort to escape, we barricaded ourselves in the basement, praying for morning to come and banish the darkness once and for all. But as the hours dragged on, it became clear that we were trapped in a nightmare from which there was no escape. The walls seemed to close in around us, the very air thick with malevolence. I could feel the spirit's presence pressing down on us, suffocating us with its unholy power. And then, just as all hope seemed lost, a ray of sunlight pierced through the darkness. Dawn had finally arrived bathing the house in a warm, golden light. With a final, desperate surge of strength, we burst through the basement door and stumbled out into the morning air. The spirit shrieked in rage behind us, its power waning in the face of the rising sun. We ran, never looking back, leaving Willow Creek House and its dark secrets behind us. But even now, as we try to rebuild our lives, I can't shake the feeling that the spirit still watches us, waiting for the perfect moment to strike again.